So at this time, we are very, very privileged because here in the Kapow Center, we do have the King of the Lycans, Morgrim. Morgrim, thank you very much for joining me on the Kapow Podcast. You should be thankful, but I'm not. Why have you chosen me? Why have management sent me to this box with you, Martin? Now, Morgrim, we have brought you here because you are something of a mysterious character, someone with, dare I say it, a, a dark past. I know it's a very sensitive subject, but please, can you tell the listeners in the world of Kapow about your time in a cage? For 25 years, I was locked in a cage. I was taken from my family, from my people, by you filthy humans. Do you know what humans do to things they do not understand? They either destroy them or they experiment on them. Guess what they did to me? Look, I'm, I'm really sorry, Morgan. I, I really shouldn't have brought this up. And as, as a member of the human race, I, I do apologise. <sighs> but um, you, you managed to escape. You, you managed to, to break free from your captors. Yes, I escaped. And yes... I destroyed my keepers. And after 25 years, all I want to do is destroy you filthy humans. And the only way I get to do that, to take revenge within your legal confines, is in Kapow. So you managed to escape, you managed to break free, you managed to train in the ways of the warrior. Why have you now decided to join the ranks of evil? Humanity's experiments on me augmented my lycanthropic abilities. Why else do you think I'm here? Why else do you think, you filthy humans, cannot even comprehend my lichen form. I have to hold it back because it would send you insane. But I'm here to destroy the humans and evil will do just that. But I have to destroy the colors first. Okay, Morgan. Well, th- thank you for that. I think that does bring us a little closer to your mindset. But we have been hoping to have you with us in the Kapow Studios for quite a while now. But from what I hear, you've been overseas. You've been abroad. You've been on some kind of mission uh, to Japan. But but what are your links to Japan? What are your links to the Far East? Well, it's funny. Not only am I descended from King Lycaon of ancient Greece himself. The first Lycan. It seems that I have traces of lineage from Japan. A man who followed the steps of Ben K. A man who, along with his own following, his own pack, if you will, roamed the Japanese countryside. So you're talking a, a samurai warrior, someone imbued with some kind of magical, mystical force? Not a samurai. He did not have no master. He was a ronin. Ronin are samurais without masters. He was his own master. So what was special about this ronin? This family, this clan, this pack, their lycanthropy was different. Not only could they assume wolf form, much like myself, although your pitiful human eyes could never see it, you would fall to the lunacy. They had a way of augmenting this power to encase themselves in nigh unpenetrable armor forged mystically through the powers of the gift of the wild itself. What, what is this called? What, what, what is the name of this Japanese power? It was known as the Henshin. Loosely translated, it means to transform. So you're saying that they could turn from human form to wolf form to something greater than both? Yes, a powerful warrior form. They were near undefeatable. All the samurai they faced, all the feudal lords and their retainers fell before them. So you're saying that this henshin race, this race of of shape-shifting super warriors, you've got some kind of blood link 
to this tribe of people? Have you managed to tap this arcane power? Whilst I have blood ties to them, I have yet to tap into this potential. If I could, I would easily become the Kapow Hero Weight Champion. I would easily destroy all of the superheroes and evil would be victorious. Now, talking of evil, we've had uh, something of a change of management here in Kapow recently. Steve Luther rising up to the new rank of the, the manager, the, the Neron ruler of the world of Kapow. And he's treating you and the mad dog, Brian Quinn, as his own personal attack dogs. I mean, how does... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I am no one's attack dog. Well, what I've seen from the matches so far, he just, he calls you and forces you into fights where he does not want to we fight himself. We choose to fight. Myself, the Mad Dog, and Steve Luther have a similar goal. The pack are no one's attack dogs. We attack who and when we want to. So, with a brand new volume of Kapow coming your way very, very soon, who are you here to take down next? We've seen you have battles in the past with the soldiers of sanitation. We've seen you have battles against Team Wrestlemon. I mean, are your sights set even higher? Oh yes. We have taken on and defeated every superhero they've thrown at us. Who's left? Well, if I'm not very much mistaken, you were beaten within an inch of your life by the aerial assassin Will Ospreay and the man with the power of the Dragon Balls, Kelly Kakarot. Did you really need to remind me? All I can say was it was a battle of epic proportions. They nearly burnt your skin with the power of the Kamehameha. <sighs> Kelly Kakarot. He has been a thorn in the pack's side. And yes, he did defeat us. B had the help of Will Ospreay, a man who has since not been seen in Kapow. He's been off elsewhere doing what he does best, and he is very good at what he does. But I assure you the next time he steps foot in the Kapow ring, the pack will be there. So Morgrim, before we have to let you go, one more word, please, for the people of Kapow. Kapow will return on the 21st of February. We return to Cow Plain, and believe me when I tell you, evil are only going to get stronger. Steve Luther, Carl Atlas, the mad dog Brian Quinn, and myself, Morgrim, the king of the Lycans, will be victorious.